welcome to How To, a quality digest series for quality control, quality assurance specialists who need quick instruction on how to get something done. This episode is sponsored by Meditorial. And now Craig Howell of CPM Labs is going to show us uh, how and why to use ceramic gauge blocks. Great. This is a set of gauge blocks Meditorial provides specifically tailored for micrometers. You'll notice the different sizes. They're not 100, 200, 300. 400, they stagger the final digit so the, the anvil and spindle on a micrometer at different, different rotations. This will show up any lead error and show up any parallelism error all in one. Okay. Also comes with a optical flat which also is, it's two-sided, it's also an optical parallel. So you can do that for the parallelism. That's critical on micrometer calibration. Gauge blocks are not enough. That's part of the equation but there's more to it. There's flatness of the anvil. This is normally used under a monochromatic light and it'll show up the different light bands for flatness. Each light band, each curvature of light band is 12 millionths of an inch. And then you would contact them together and count the light bands and you could actually figure the parallelism from that. And I, I should point out that there is a uh, separate videos on how to calibrate a, uh, a micrometer and also how to uh, do your flatness and parallelism uh, right. using a monochromatic light source and, and the optical flat. Right. Uh, so different set of videos, uh, search for them. All right. So why would you, why would you bother with, with ceramic? There's a number of reasons they have that are some definite advantages. They're much more abrasive resistant than steel. Where but ste why do you have to worry about that? Well, a lot of times the anvils and spindles are not quite as flat as you would like them to be and they will have different, we always deburr micrometers before we start, but there still ends up being things that can scratch the, the gauge block or, or hurt it, damage it in some way. Ceramic has superior abrasion resistance. They're much better, they're, they're about 10 times, five to 10 times the abrasion resistance of steel and even four to five times that of carbide, which is the main reason people use carbide is abrasion. Uh, the thermal expansion, the coefficient of expansion, how much these grow under heat conditions. Ceramics a lot closer to steel than, than carbide is. Okay. So that, that would work. You can ring ceramic and, and steel gauge blocks together. You can put them together and ring. Ring is a process of of getting them to where they will stick to each other. Actually, can we, uh, if, actually, if I, let me move this a little yeah. bit. If you can do that under the camera, then sure. maybe we can see that, okay. We'll try doing a ring process when they're both very, very clean. You don't want to have any dirt or you're just grinding it right into the gauge block. You'll get to the point you can lift the bottom gauge block just with the, the contact of these two. They are rung together. So now you can get different lengths. Maybe you want to have a two inch or a three inch combined. Okay. You can combine ceramic with steel. So that's a definite advantage. Uh, the dimensions that are printed on the blocks Black, uh, black on white, I tell you, out in the shop floor, especially with my eyes, sometimes trying to find the number, you got to keep rotating this back and forth. Mm -hmm. Get the light reflect off Get of it just right. <laughs> See, just right. This one, you have no doubt what, what block you're dealing with. These are fantastic. Uh, you have to be very careful. You don't want to drop them. Are, are, but are they, I mean, will they, I, mean, I, I think ceramic, I think ceramic plate, like I'm going to drop it and it's going to shatter into a million pieces. Right. These are not that. These are, these are very durable. They've made them to where they can survive the shock of being dropped. We don't recommend that. That's not, not a good practice. But if it happens, they won't, your one inch block won't, you won't end up with three, three hundred thousand blocks. Okay. They will not shatter or break. Uh, they're they're non-magnetic is another advantage of ceramic. Steel gauge blocks can become magnetized. We have to demagnetize them occasionally when we calibrate. They can attract chips, metal, flakes. These won't attract anything. Uh, the grain structure is very, very tight and dense with ceramics, so they tend to ring better together when you're, again, when you're ringing them together, they will ring a lot easier than steel ones will, and the ringing is a much tighter contact with each other. Now, when you ring gauge blocks together, it's always advisable at the end of the day to pull them apart. Why is that? Uh, if there was any sort, especially with steel gauge blocks, if there was any sort sort of contamination, they can oxidize, rust, a number of different things. If there's any coolant, that sort of thing. Also, dimensionally, I don't have the specifics, but I know NIST never recommends ringing if you don't have to. So surely, don't leave them that way. Okay. 
Oh man, if you yeah, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, that that's, it takes quite a bit. And actually, the thing that's weird. Wow, those are really. <laughs> I can <laughs> only way to get them apart was Just to uh, slide them. was to slide them apart. Now, oh, I'm sorry. You said I could drop these. Your head. Your head. <laughs> so, and also, so let me let me see if I can ring them together. Wow, that that rung. I you know I've never worked with ceramic gauge blocks. I've only played around with uh, the, the the steel, steel. ones. Uh, Boy, those those just almost like snap together like Legos. <laughs> <laughs> just about. So that's that's why you yeah. would choose this specific set of blocks. No, you, you know you 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 touched on it, but I, I'd like you to know, uh, discuss again why you should always use gloves when handling uh, gauge blocks. I guess particularly maybe steel ones. But two two major reasons. Uh, mostly there would be heat transfer from your hands, and that we would normally in a lab use cotton gloves. Okay. But under the lights, I didn't figure heat transfer was going to really, <laughs> really be too definite there. Uh, the other part is the oils in your skin. A lot of okay. people have very abrasive, we'll find on our precision tools, and some of you have seen probably on your lathes and your mills, where people rest their hands, it'll actually rust in that area. Okay. Well, you get that on a different level. But with gauge blocks, Mitutoyo also provides, they provide an, an inspection report that shows all the different dimensions of these so you know exactly how far off they are, the total variation on the block. Mitutoyo just does an excellent job with this sort of thing. So you can always, you can, when you're at the point of actually applying these, you'll know exactly what they measured. Okay. So there you have it. That is a Mitutoyo ceramic gauge block set set up specifically for micrometers. But you can use it also on anything that you need different levels of, of checking within an inch. Okay. All right. Well, thank, uh, thank you, Craig. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Obviously, thanks to Mitutoyo for sponsoring the show and providing the ceramic gauge blocks. And we will see you at the next How To. As the world's largest provider of measurement and inspection solutions, Mitutoyo America Corporation offers a complete selection of machines, sensors, systems, and services with a line encompassing CMMs, vision, form, precision tools and instruments, and metrology data management software. Mitutoyo's nationwide network of metrology centers provides application, calibration, service, repair, and educational programs. 